Hey, True Believers England team here along with Dalton the Authenticator. Good evening. Happy post Christmas, everyone. And of course, uh, Twiddles, world, world, Twiddles. And uh, we're here to count down the top 10 superhero movies of 2022. I keep hearing and I keep seeing lists. Hey, we're ranking all eight superhero movies. Well, actually, there were 15. There are 15, guys. You know what? It's a new day. And if I can accept this, you can accept this. Streaming is real. Well, if you can, okay. if you count all the comic book movies, yes, but in specific superhero movies, it's slightly different. Even with that, there's ten at least because yeah, you've got, of, uh, of secret, um, secret headquarters and yeah, yeah. But yes, I include graphic novels. If it's connected to comics, it's in here. We even decided that even though they're about 45, 50 minutes long, we're going to include. The Marvel shorts, Werewolf by Night, and the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday yeah. special in this. Some of the best of Phase Four so far. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff, man. Why would we not? Yeah, I don't see. I I fail to see the problem, sir, and that is not a problem. Mm -hmm. In all honesty, um, but yeah, okay. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to have a nice conversation here about the top ten uh, superhero movies and such. And just to get things started with number 10, you know what? I, I wish uh, I did include some because it's the last minute. We need some sort of uh, visual or something like that. Um, with the numbers, like most people do when they do yeah, these. Sort number, of yeah, if we had any kind of production value. Number 10. <laughs> Look, it's 10. All right. Ooh, that is expensive right there. I had a real flying bird. How many of these freaking uh, other guys have real? Freaking flying birds. I don't know. You yeah, know but watch Mojo has a million plus subscribers there. <laughs> that is, yeah, so I guess, yeah, I guess there theirs counts a little bit better than my flying real flying bird. Okay, so number okay, number 10. We 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 hashed this out, we fought, we divorced, we got back together, but me and Dalton came up with this number 10. And at number 10, we have a movie that I liked, and Dalton thought was I'm gonna leave leave his uh saying. But it is League of Super Pets. Starring aggressively okay was how Aggr I put this. Aggressively okay. Look, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Now, this is probably uh, closer to a family film than a lot of uh, even family film superhero films are. Just, uh, it, it really is a good cartoon, though. It's fun. It's funny. It's got uh, enough action in it. I can see where some people might think that maybe it needs to be trimmed 10 or 15 minutes, but over, overall me and Gail went by, this is my birthday movie, by the way, my birthday is <laughs> July 29th. This came out July 29th. And I was like, that's what we're doing. Gailey, we're going to go have a nice dinner and then I'm going to take you out to the movies. And she's on her phone. She goes, what are we seeing? And I said, League of Super Pets. And I showed okay, her. Okay. Now I feel bad for being slightly mean to it. Damn. I don't <laughs> She, so yeah, she's, birthday, she saw the trailer and she fell in love with the idea and she actually likes it more than I do, but I do enjoy this. I think, yeah, sure. Why not? It, it deserves its spot in the top 10, but enough about that. If you, if you haven't seen us on, I think it's streaming now on HBO max. Uh, yes. You want to talk about uh, number nine. I'm going to send over to you, Mr. Dalton. Mm-hmm. No, that's when you start talking about number nine. Oh, I, I thought you were going to change the thing. and then I was, I was when you started talking about number nine. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, number nine is Black Panther Wakanda Forever because it was, uh, it was okay, but there were a lot of problems with it. Yeah. And it didn't – and those problems were evident in the first couple of viewings, unlike – how we thought about another movie that didn't even make it to this list, Thor Love and Thunder. Um, while, while I didn't mind the changes, some, well, okay, I should say some of the changes made to Namor or Namor, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it pushed it just that little extra bit far, like with the Johnny Depp Lone Ranger and Kimusabi meaning wrong brother and things. And then it was just like, yeah, no, you, you, you had me and I'm gone. But yeah, it still deserves to be here. It's still a worthy sequel to Black Panther because Black Panther itself had a lot of problems that people ignored going in. 
Um, it still did do a very worthy tribute to Chadwick Boseman. Letitia Wright isn't terrible, and they didn't turn Shuri into too much of a Mary Sue. They made her character arc work, and they even made Riri Williams far less insufferable than she used to be. Granted, she's still a little insufferable, but, you know, that there's only so much fixing they can do. She is better in that movie than she is in the comics. Yeah. I, I will die on that particular hill. Oh, yeah. Is, yeah. Um, both, of the, both of the SJW characters that got introduced um, cinematically, I should say, because Lord knows there's no hope for She-Hulk, but both of the SJW characters that got introduced this year were the best possible versions of what they were. So yeah, uh, uh, we, yeah, we're going to talk about it later. But there is another character that we are quite uh, character not, that not, built yeah, the channel. Yeah, character that built my comic book channel because of how bad she was. And yeah, but for this one, I would say, and I've said this in our review. Please, guys, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, it was Angela Bassett all the way. The movie actually Oscar. when. When she was taken out of the film, I think that the movie suffered. Yeah, she needs the power armor movie. made of Oscar gold. That's what needs Almost to happen. Definitely. They need to make a Black Panther suit for her. Yeah. All the Oscars. It, she it wins. was. It, it's something. I mean, it's incredibly flawed. I would. I'm um, in it. It, it uh, contradicts itself eighteen different ways to Sunday. Uh, the but Angela Bassett is worthy and and worthy of an Oscar. I think. All right, let's move on to number eight. I, I guess I'll take the lead on this one since we're uh, – or, or wait. Uh, no, no, this one's yours too. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought you gave me eight too. There you go. Yep, Super Sons. Honestly, this one gets points just for the sheer wholesomeness of it. And it's actually a pretty decent, like, takeoff of the comic. Obviously, they don't do everything that the comic did because it's a movie. But it, it captured, it did what Brian Michael Bendis was basically the anime monitor of, which is it recaptured what made Super Sons the comic so good that even I, my non-Batman loving, non-Superman loving ass hattery can appreciate. So um, there's that. But I've... um, yeah, this, this one is just, it's really, really wholesome. And you get to see all of the dynamics between Damien and and uh, John that you want to see. So if you haven't watched this one yet, for some freaking reason, given our audience, you should watch it. And if you have watched it, watch it again. It's good. I like the fact that they let them be kids. They are actually written as kids. Of course, Damien is written as a child raised to be an assassin. Yeah, probably. I, of but, course. You know, a lot of people made a big deal over the fact that they even let Superman say truth, justice, and the American way. I love it. That's American thing. It is. Wait, did people thing. actually complain about that? No, no. Uh, some people complained, and uh, some people like those in our group. Um, and and I, yet, if and yet, if uh, if we complained about the uh, the uh, Soviet Superman from a few movies ago, that was that right wing. Had problems, uh, yeah. Overall, though, I, I enjoyed Battle of the Super Sons as well, and I agree. If you get a chance, I look, I uh, I kind of flew up the flag, okay. I kind of I, I went to the skull and crossbones myself. But if it comes on HBO it Max, check it out. <laughs> yeah, uh, all righty. So, uh, let's see, let's uh, let's move on a touch, and I'm going to talk about an. I said it's based on comics and graphic novels and original superheroes, the whole nine yards. I know some people who are doing these movies are saying, hey, there's only eight superhero films. But you know what? You make it about comics and graphic novels. You get movies like Marry Me with Jennifer Lopez and Owen Wilson, which I thought was a decent, uh, which I thought was a decent romantic comedy. It didn't make the top ten. However, there is an action film this year that was based on a graphic novel that was a hell of a lot of fun. It starred Brad Pitt, and it was called Bullet Train. Did you? Uh, are you lucky enough to have seen this movie? I did see it. It's yet another in the same vein of of sort of pseudo John Wicks, and it's good. It deserves oh my to gosh, be in the company this, it's in. Well, if if there's one word to describe this film, it's kinetic. 
this movie, either in its dialogue and its cinematography and its camera work, or in the action itself, it is action packed. That's and can we talk I about the cinematography it. for a second? Because one thing I love about pretty much all the the like John Wick associated movies and or like side franchises is the directors know how to use color. And that seems mm-hmm. like a very small thing. But watch modern movies long enough, folks, and you learn that for some reason, even though we have a more diverse color palette than we've ever had cinematically, a lot of movies just for some reason are allergic to using color and it's so nice when a movie is just like nope we can use all the colors so by god we're using all the colors oh by the way i'm sorry to do this to you there dalton i i just saw asaka's asaka's uh comment oh yeah this is old man comics so i ain't in the mood i'm not a mod here this is supposed to be the movie channel. I put it on the wrong one. <laughs> wah, 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 All right. So, you know, I'll, I'll just save the video. I'll put it up on the uh, movie channel as well. Oh, we're my gosh. We're professionals, folks. That would explain yeah. why we're getting a larger audience what's, than I was expecting. What, what's the uh, New, Newton's Law, whatever it's called, if uh, something... Murphy's I, Law. Murphy's you're thinking Law, of. right. Anything that can go wrong or has the capacity to go wrong will go this wrong. This is Anglantine's law, law. Any way he could screw up, he will. <laughs> uh, and I'm see. quoting that, saving that sound like for later. Isn't that how people describe Carol Danvers, that the MCU version is bad as she is? Oh, yes. Actually, that is true. And I will. I hate watching the Captain Marvel movie. If it's wholesome, uh, someone should fire whoever made the poster for Battle of Super Sons. <laughs> yeah, it does look a little um, frightening. But there you go. Would you consider manga movies, anime movies, or comic But The problem with that, Ahsoka, and, and I would consider them superhero movies or comic book movies, or if you wanted to make your own uh, segment of it, it could, it could do its own segment because there's about one billion yeah. uh, movies uh, based on it. The, At uh, the, the very is, least, um, Dragon Ball Super Superhero probably should be a superhero movie, considering it's literally aping the superhero style yeah, and it's in the My Hero title. Academia had a film out this year. Uh, there was a movie that I would recommend. It's on Netflix called Bubble. Uh, Bell was a film. Excuse me, once again on Netflix, it was all right. Um, that being said, uh, once again, uh, okay, I didn't actually talk about Bullet Train. Bullet Train is, uh, yeah, it's... I've got to go do this. I might have to kill a few people. People are trying to stop me from doing this and they want to kill me kind of film. And uh, it just goes, it's just assassin versus assassin on a train. Yeah, murder on the Orient Express, but with assassins. It's so much fun. And that's that's one thing. The, The action scenes are fun. The characters are fun. It has the chick from the boys in it, as you can see on the poster. Damn straight, I'm going to include that poster. All right. <laughs> it's awesome. But yes, I, I, I recommend it right now. This is, I believe, streaming on Netflix. Uh, but one that's streaming on Prime, this one, I believe, is going to you. You could start this one out here. Uh, yep. Dalton, and you get number uh, number six. Yep. And that would be the Sumeritan. Basically, imagine if you took Rocky Balboa, the like, I believe sixth Rocky movie, six or seven, yeah. and you you combined it with um, Hancock, and there's your movie. Oh my Sly gosh, Stallone yeah. is a washed up superhero um, who has kind of become um, disillusioned with himself and disillusioned with the whole superheroing thing, and. Because this one kid gets saved by him in a way that is just implausible enough to imply superheroing, now this kid is trying to get him back in the game, and of course he's resentful and doesn't want to get back in the game for reasons that I will not spoil, and, you know, if you've ever seen one of these type of movies, or even the two movies I just mentioned, you know how this goes. Um, But it's sliced alone as, as a superhero you know, a retired superhero, what could possibly go wrong? That's right. kind of my, my like uh, mentality with regards to this. I like your description of Hancock meets Rocky Balboa because in Ra- Rocky Balboa, I mean, everybody loved him. In this one, though, nobody knows him. So it's almost like Rocky Balboa, but he's Rocky from like Rocky Five 
he's in the neighborhood. People are kind of laughing that he's a, he's, he's failed uh, in mm-hmm. this one though. Um, gang, uh, there's a gang that, um, it, it's like 20 years or 30 years after he's disappeared. And the last time he, uh, had a fight, he actually killed his villain and he, he felt so bad. He went into retirement. The gang found the villain's armor and they're using it to kind of hype up their strength and become powerful. And it's driving him out more and more until he's uh, basically got a, has, he has to take care of the guy who is wearing his uh, old nemesis's armor. And it's just this nice buildup. It's a really, it, it is one of the movies and there's a few of them. I would say this, uh, this year, Far better than it had any right to be. For a straight to streaming movie with, you know, I, Stallone, who's. I don't let's think face that it, matters not anymore. Exactly, an action star anymore. I don't think straight to streaming matters anymore. Uh, that's one of the things why I, I like to include stuff like Samaritan, because it is straight to streaming, but it's good. It holds up. Look, I do know that there's a lot of uh, lower tiered films as well that go straight to streaming, but I don't think it holds the same thing. Because you still you get some Oscar worthy movies um, this year and, and on Netflix, Blonde went mm-hmm. straight. The Marilyn Monroe story went straight to streaming as well. Um, yep. Yeah, but uh, otherwise, I yeah I like this film quite a bit as well. And uh, if it goes on DVD, I will definitely try to pick this one up. Yeah, uh, and if you if you like if you like Sylvester Stallone and you like movies like Hancock, like blank man like sort of the sort of off-brand superhero movies you'll like this fine it's, now, it's a good time moving on to number five it, they, these might be a bit controversial because technically they're not feature length that being said i don't know if we're going to do a tv uh show thing and these are more like movies i guess you can call them tv specials or something like back in the day when i was younger they used to have but but number five, we talked about it. We argued. He actually punched me in the face from Pennsylvania. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> but, Magic, we de- motherfucker. <laughs> but we decided that if we were going to include these, one would be number five and one would be number four. And for number five, we picked the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. I was blown away by this. Not only yep. was I, I mean, okay, first of all, it is a simple and fun uh, movie starring Manus and Drax. That's that right there. That's one level of it. It is a fish out of water film where they're in Los Angeles, and that alone was a ton of fun. But what I was really surprised about this Guardians of the Galaxy ho- holiday special, and they say holiday in the way, of course, we always know when people are saying happy holidays, what they're really saying is Merry Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a Christmas movie. They say holiday on the uh, on the poster, but it's a Christmas movie. And what really shocked me was this had Christmas spirit. Oh yeah, I, I was I was I I was floored because I didn't think I would get that. You were expecting feeling. basically the Star Wars holiday special or something or, to it. Uh, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking Taika Waititi was going to come in and Taika Waititi it. And it was just going to be ridiculous and stupid. And it wasn't, it was going to have no heart whatsoever. And instead, it it basically heaped a whole mound of it onto Similar the though they might be. James yeah. Gunn is not Taika Waititi. The, um, the, the humor was there. It's got bite at one point in time. They hurt some cops. And I believe Manus then comes up and threatens them after they've been hurt. Uh, she steals from somebody. Uh, it's really Mantis. Manus is Guardians in the lead are here. Guardians are anti-heroes, folks. Don't forget it. Yeah, Manus is in the lead here. I actually I actually like the way they handled her. Uh, Kevin Bacon, of course, is uh, the plot. They're going to steal Kevin Bacon. And he is just, you could tell he was along for the ride. He had a blast uh, filming it, and I had a blast watching it. I want to see him come back for some, like, give him an actual role next time. But bring Kevin Bacon back for something, please. I don't want Kevin Bacon to have a role. I want Kevin Bacon to get superpowers and join the Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't. I mean, let him be the very first original MCU superhero, and he is strictly called Bacon. 
what's what's That's the it. name of what's the name of the superhero in the Marvel universe who's like a who's also like an actor? I, I'm Man? blanking. Wonder Man. Thank you. Make so, him Wonder Man. That would be good. Just popped in my head. I want Kevin Bacon as a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and Guardians of the Galaxy are closely tied to the Nova Corps. Let's make Kevin Kevin Bacon a member of the Nova Corps and a Guardian of the Galaxy. Boom! I just improved the Marvel Universe for you, and you're welcome. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're getting one more Guardians movie, and I don't think James Gunn watches this, or he would have... Uh... Or he probably would have uh, said something by now. Yeah, but tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong that you don't. No, you that don't, would be that would be good, especially if they keep the um, Guardians three thousand team around after the main Guardians mm -hmm. in the MCU are right. done and dusted. There you go. There you go. All righty. Let's. By the way, love this once again. Uh, I was very surprised at how much. Anglin team. Your... Okay. My bird is chewing on something. I was like, the hell? Okay. I can't I, see I, I, you were mid-sentence, and then you stopped talking. I, 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 I couldn't tell it, if your mic came undone or what. I heard it, and it was paper. In this room, it's either, okay, it's a receipt, no problem, or uh, Twiddles just signed somebody's comic book. You know, <laughs> So I uh -huh. had to make sure, yeah. All righty, so let's move on to number four. And this one, you wanted to, you wanted the lead, so if you wanted yes, to. Yes, sir. Werewolf by night. Oh wait, did I forget the? Did I forget to add Werewolf by night? If anything can go wrong, I will make it. Murphy's go law, wrong. folks. Anglantine's law. I will. I will. Oh, that's why I ran out of space. Okay. Anyway, please, by all means, continue. Yeah, but um, Werewolf by night is genuinely awesome. It was released as a holiday special, but they don't they don't trivialize it or tokenize it or anything along those lines. You get you get the lore of the Bloodstone. You get monster hunters. You get Werewolf by Night. You get Man Thing. You get Elsa Bloodstone. It's all in a retro style black and white because again, evoking that Halloween aesthetic. And honestly, Jack Russell and Elsa Bloodstone might be tied for my favorite character introduction in the entirety of Phase Four because I I was kind of expecting them to to do the more modern uh, Jack Russell and kind of make him sort of the action hero type thing. Sort of a werewolf, but he's Rocket Raccoon personality-wise. But they didn't, and I'm glad they didn't, because instead what they did was they gave him his like original, more dignified personality. And my God, does the MCU need people that they let stay freaking dignified. Also, the friendship between him and Man-Thing, for that is a thing, is very, very good. And they do they do man thing really really well, including his power that he who knows fear shall burn at the touch yes. of the man thing. Uh, this came out of nowhere. We saw the previews like a month later. We got the TV, the TV show, and I got to tell you, um, I'm like everybody else. I have hope. I probably have more hope for the MCU than a lot of people do, but I realize what sucks and what doesn't. And I'm willing to make an honest, honest assessment of others. Uh, but after seeing what was the MCU before Werewolf by Night, and then we get Werewolf by Night, it's like, uh, what what the f was Thor Love and Thunder? That, yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, I've got this writing team on both of you badness, please. Is, <laughs> like, what? You, you can do this, and you still make Thor Love and Thunder? You can do this, and you make She-Hulk? That yeah, and, and, and by the way, is... while we're while we're on that particular point, um for all of the black pillars might have said, Oh, Elsa, you know, Mary Sue, yada yada yada. No. This the relationship between her and Jack Russell is exactly like the relationship between Rick O'Connell and his uh archaeologist turned love interest in the mummy movies, or the relationship between um, Anna and Van Helsing in the in the in the uh, 2003 Van Helsing movie. That's the kind of vibe I got from those two, and it's awesome. Like she's it, a it genuinely is. badass female character, and at no point does she pull the oppression card or the feminist patriarchy nonsense. She's just uh, a badass female character, and she doesn't need no stinking gender studies gobbledygook to justify it to herself. 
I, I will say this. I will say this. And I said this when Ant-Man came out about Wonder Woman. We got Man Thing live on. No, I'm just, I, I, I can't say this. Never mind. I just realized he was in Justice League. But we got a Man Thing, Werewolf by Night solo before we got Flash on. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. B before, Martian before Man we got Hunter a solo Flash. has been around. Martian Manhunter has been around since the 50s. And we get Werewolf by Night. And before they took a second crack at uh, Green Lantern. Yep. Yeah. This we is, also got this, Doctor Fate before that, which we'll talk about later. How, this is how bad Warner Brothers shoots itself in the foot. But this was awesome. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this one. This one's a lot of fun. All righty. Uh, hey, I get to talk about number three first. Um, I'll tell Go you ahead. what. Do me a favor. Can you get some... Um, get some comments i'm gonna let the bird out so he doesn't squeak loud i'll be right back okay i am temporarily running the ship while england england team goes and does real world things so now we can talk about it behind his back won't that be fun haha <laughs> okay uh he's cool he's just getting a little rambunctious that's all he's very much like a child and yeah, he makes his cries. Oh, come with me, do this, do this, do that. Uh, then they retcon Mar Martian Manhunter as military general and Man of Steel. I know, right? Right? That was John Jones. Come on. All righty. So, uh, number three. And this is almost like if you know us, you know it's going to be number three. I'm very happy to talk about it. And that is uh, Black Adam. And by the way, I love the freaking posters that are overseas. He's got fireworks for f***ing hands, kids. <laughs> How, look at this. That's awesome. We get Photoshop posters. Yeah, we, look we, what we, they get, get. we get face poster. They get the ones with actual effort. Oh, my no, gosh. No right. justice in the world. Like, that is you. so awesome. I love that poster. I want, I want the international Black Adam poster right there. Uh, look, I, I we talked about this at length. Watch the trailer. Added to his Christmas list. <laughs> <laughs> watch the watch the video for the full uh, for for the full review, please. By all means, I thought this was a blast. This is a flawed film, and I get it. It's on HBO Max now, and people are picking it apart because it's not the perfect thing, and it didn't make a billion dollars. And for some reason. If you if you're black pilled, you get a fucking trophy when a movie doesn't do well. I saw somebody say they did a video about Babylon. Who the f cares about Babylon in the comic book community? Seriously. Yeah, no. Um, like, but, but uh, it's like uh, that they're having more fun talking about the fact that this movie didn't make a billion dollars. OK, fine. You know what? Kind of should have. Honestly, it, but it never was, mind. It was a lot of fun. And I do believe this is one more time Warner Brothers shot themselves in the foot by not putting this in August. Shazam and Black Adam belong in August uh, at the end where there's not a whole bunch of things. Yeah, or at least in a month where there's nothing else going on. So they don't have yeah, to not two oh, weeks. wait a month later. The biggest movie of the year is coming out. God dang it. <laughs> two weeks, by the way, two weeks before Black Panther came out. The same way Shazam came out two weeks before fucking Endgame. Yeah, yeah. that it's, it's like it, they're crippling it, it, it on purpose. You're right? doing that on purpose. Okay, it, so it, Black Black Adam, obviously the Rock's movie. It's very he. It's very much a rock film. It's it's a rock movie when the Rock is scowling. Basically, I thought the action was fine, uh, but when it comes right down to it this movie could have been called the JSA and we would have looked and gone, yes, now it's yep. better. Yep. Uh, the JSA make it. They really do. Uh, all of them are, I was actually surprised that they didn't embarrass us with the, uh, with the cyclone. Granted, she has no character whatsoever. There's no, nothing for her to do, but she still looked good. Uh, the effect around her looked good. I liked, um, I liked, uh, he's nuke in the comics. I forget what he's called. Adam Smasher. Adam Smasher. Um, and, uh, the highlight of the film was Hawkman and most importantly, Dr. Fate, Pierce yeah, can... Brosnan, Pierce Brosnan was like, uh, let me, let me, one, let me show you how you can be cool with the raise of an eyebrow. And two, let me show you how, how you can act with the raise of an eyebrow. 
he was very understated, but it was necessary for the role. And it was it was brilliant. It was it was honestly, I've waited so long for a proper portrayal of Doctor Fate on the big screen, and I got it. It wasn't in his own movie, which is sad, but I got it. God damn it! And congratulations. My I, the scene I always point to for the perfect Doctor Fate and his acting in it was the fight between in the, the apartment between Hawkman and Black the Adam. The you fight nice children scene. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the way Pierce, and he doesn't say a word, but it's the way he acts, the way he reacts to these two, as you said, children fighting and destroying this apartment. It was, it was just, it was brilliant. I, I thought that the JSA made this film and otherwise, even without, I think it's an entertaining movie on its base. It's not a great they, film, but it's, uh, it's a very, very entertaining film. And I realize now that it wouldn't have mattered either way, because of course, post this movie, everything is getting retconned to hell. Yeah. But, but one gripe I have with this movie in relation to it's Dr. Fate use is people who use Dr. Fate, in particular, Kent Nelson, the original and best Dr. Fate. Don't at me needs to stop playing the now let's pass the helm game because every portrayal of Dr. Fate that we get that does include Kent, and I'm grateful when it does, but every portrayal of Dr. Fate that we get that includes Kent always ends with he dies quickly and then now let's pass the helm. Let's play musical right. freaking chairs with the helm for well, evermore. The, uh, the, the one thing, once again entertaining film it's it's more of an entertaining film than a good film but i think it could have been better had they not had the the uh last minute villain yeah the end. was unnecessary black adam's the villain just black adam he can become an anti-hero but he does that by finding out the error of his ways and dedicating his life to protecting Kondok. that and he, honestly that he what you have been the villain and honestly, what you had in, in the movie while they were fighting Sabak was Dr. Fate playing mentor to Black yeah. Adam, kind of. And that would have been a nice way of resolving the con. Like, edit out Sabak entirely and make the final fight the JSA versus Black Adam and have Dr. Fate be the one who tries to reason with him. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. And then, you... then, then if you want to, you can have him die because, of course, you know, we need to play musical freaking chairs with the helm, whatever. But and then you bring him and Shazam together, and the plot line of that one is that they realize that both of them are weakened, especially with Shazam sharing his power with his family plus Black Adam. Mm -hmm. And Black Adam decides he's going to fight them to be Earth's uh, magic protector. But what, what, one, one thing, though, it, it, they, wouldn't, they, they wouldn't be weakened from sharing their powers with him because he gets his powers from different gods. Okay, well, there you go. He's stronger. He's fighting the family, and they're fighting to see who's, who should be the one. All righty, kids. We're going to go to number two, and uh, there's no freaking way I'm going to be allowed to take the lead on this one. So, Dalton, number two. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And this is another one of, like, there are many, many flaws in this movie. But, oh, God, how I love it. I love it so much. And the, one of the main reasons why I love it, and I've said this six ways from Sunday, but I'll say it again for, for the record, for those in the cheap seats. The thing that makes me love this movie is me and Sam Raimi appeared to have been on the same page. Because when this movie was announced, everyone and their mother apparently zeroed in on the term multiverse and completely forgot the Doctor Strange part and the and the of madness part, i.e. the parts of the title you should have been focusing on. Because this movie is not a multiverse movie. It's not like uh, everything everywhere all at once. And that's one of the things that made a bunch of people unnecessarily upset with this movie. It's not a multiverse movie. It's a Lovecraftian horror comedy with the multiversal elements. That's the difference. And being as Sam Raimi and myself both agreed that focusing on the Lovecraftian supernatural elements was far more important than focusing on the multiverse, this movie gave me almost everything I wanted. It could have given me more, and that's why I compare it to being the magical equivalent of Winter Soldier rather than the magical equivalent of Civil War. And yes, again, there are problems, 
but oh god this was such a massive improvement over the first doctor strange i i almost cried over how good this one is by comparison now i agree with austin on this one they should have titled it something different the multiverse of madness it was because it really the multiverse was there but it wasn't a movie about the multiverse you're right about that it was a movie about scarlet witch losing a freaking sh so it really should have been dr Str straight up dr strange versus scarlet witch and they could have used the multiverse and they could have introduced the elements of the multiverse but by calling it Multiverse of the Madness, people will expect Yeah, they, they were expecting No Way Home meets everything everywhere all at once, when what they should yeah. have been expecting was Ghostbusters 2 meets, um, meets and I just, uh, Evil Dead. Uh, there you go. Sounds good to me, actually. So, yeah, I, I get it. But once again, this is a flawed film, but it was a fun film. I enjoyed it. I, I, everybody and their brother brings up the music scene as one of the best. Um, we oh, actually we actually get to see Doctor Strange as a um, magician, as a sorcerer. I happen to have liked the uh, the culling of the um, what do they call him? The Professor Xavier and Illuminati. The Illuminati. I like the culling and bringing them together. Professor Xavier rolling out or, or gliding out in his chair to the tune of the uh, X Men animated series. That part was great. Just like yeah, everybody else. Yeah, behold the geekasm. Just like everybody else, though, I think they should have put up a, a bigger fight. You know, even even just to show. I mean, it was like so quickly dispatched. And by the way, Black Bolt's immune to his own power. I, I, you know, so there are things I didn't like. There are things I did like sometimes about the same thing. Um, but it, it, I got to tell you, Sam Raimi, man, saved this film for me. I liked it. I didn't like it as much as you did, but I liked it. But Sam Raimi's scenes, the um, and a lot of people, of course, talk about the zombie. But I would even go so far as the scenes where they're running through the tunnels. That's pure Sam Raimi right there. And it worked. There, there were good uh, elements of horror in this in this movie. Um, fun, fun movie. Good movie. Yep, it's it's re now it, there's room for improvement, and I expect you to improve in in Doctor Strange three, guys. But this is much better than the first one, so I'll take it. <laughs> Geek Hero saying the one thing Young Justice did decent though was making Zatara Doctor Fate. If you can't have Kent Nelson, then have Zatara. <laughs> yeah, no, I I agree because one of the problems in the comics is they always pass the helm to people who don't know jack shit about magic beforehand, which mm -hmm. is bullshit. But yeah, I I agree. If you have if you absolutely have to play musical chairs with the helm, passing it to a competent, experienced magic user rather than just a noob off the street does make more sense. All righty, which leaves us with number one. And look, you know what it is. You know, and I know if if it's if it hasn't been on the top ten yet, it's going to be at the number one spot. Um, and thankfully, I get to talk about it first, ladies and gentlemen. The Batman. Oh goodness gracious! When I, I this was a this was a weird film for me. Like when it started getting announced, I like everybody else was like Robert Pattinson. Now he's been doing some great acting work. I wasn't afraid of him. Oh, Twilight Boy? No, because I had been watching his independent career. And um, the movie he did before this was called The Lighthouse. And he was scary as So I, I was all for it. Uh, but I was, I don't know what I was in for. I don't know what I was thinking I was going to get. I know I was going to get like a, a, okay, it looks like they're going for like Zodiac plus Batman. If you've ever seen that movie. What I didn't know was that they were going to put a graphic novel on screen. One of the greatest things about this movie, one of the best scenes, I, I've wanted to see a scene like this, has nothing to do with Riddler, nothing to do with Batman. Uh, a thief in a mask robs a convenience store. He runs out. He sees the bat signal. He looks and sees this uh, area. It's just shadow filled. And then he does a slow walk and then a quick run away. And I was like, that's Batman. He isn't even in the scene. And he's the scariest guy on screen. 
And that was that's one of my favorite scenes, just because you you know who Batman is, you know what Batman is, just by this guy being afraid to walk past a shadow. To walk which past also it, which also ties back into um, Batman's golden age mandate of those those who are criminals or are superstitious cowardly lot so i shall give them something to be frightened of yeah to the and one thing i always uh, that i really i thought why is why is he doing this mind you we are dealing with a new batman in this film we're not dealing with bruce wayne uh been here for 10 years awesome can give him time and he this can is your anybody. one year two era is, basically yeah. and so this is a different Batman. Unlike Batman later, he wants you to know he's coming. Because the first that my first thought was, why is he stomping? Now I love it because it's just because he wants you, he wants you to be afraid. He wants you to fear what's coming. And yeah, so right. boom, boom, boom. Stopped everybody from, from doing the fighting. Hold oh, wait a second. Boom, boom, boom. Are you gonna do that every time? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> okay, I'm having fun. Apparently, the even the bird likes this. Element. I know, right? He likes the Batman sound. Boom, boom, boom. You would think I trained him. <laughs> <laughs> you are too cute. You're too cute, little boy. All righty. Uh, but yeah, it was. it's just, there was so much in this that we, boom, boom. Nah, oh, you missed one. <laughs> but there was so much comic book in this film i i, I just loved it I, I i from almost every angle i love this um my only gripe with it is having seen the deleted scene with what i'm affectionately calling the hannibal lecter joker mm -hmm. i really wish they had left that scene in the movie i don't know if i i like i mean if you're gonna have joker in it have them very sparse i i kind of like that i mean it was um, literally one scene so, it was I yeah. mean, it was a good scene but there there are things where of course you got to look at it and go does it really help the film no you can take it out obviously you can take it out and it's still a great movie and maybe maybe i'm biased again because just like with dr strange and the multiverse of madness giving me what mm -hmm. i actually wanted i've been saying that the joker should be portrayed more like hannibal lecter for a lot of like i would have been happy if anthony hopkins had gotten a role in 89 rather than jack nicholson but i bet so he would have been really good do, do, doing doing uh uh joker as hannibal lecter is brilliant and it's what i've wanted for so many years so i'm glad to finally have it it should have been in the movie however i'm fine with it as long as it's a flashback in the next movie and then joker is the villain in the next movie please uh, please, any. I think I'm like I. I the one thing I do agree with everybody else is let's let's take a rest on the Joker. Let's bring in uh, Scarecrow, Hugo Strange, Bane, Clayface. We have not. Clock had a King would be nice. Face. I want Clock, Clock King. Yeah, please. anyone, anyone but the Joker at this point. I think, and I also want to say, boom, boom. Boom. He is awesome. I love that. He is on point with this. With this. <laughs> Yeah, good boy. Showbiz bird. <laughs> Showbiz bird apparently is a thing. Yeah, but I, 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 there were so many good scenes in this. The one thing that I got to tell you I really got pumped over was the Batmobile. When they have that whole scene in the uh, in the, the drive, the, the parking lot there, and then you hear, and it just builds the engine. Or I was in the theater. I was like, yes. <laughs> It is. It's such a visceral movie, and an Austin. I, be movie. I believe it was the. It was either the very first issue or the origin issue. I'm not sure if Batman had a separate. It was his or first issue his versus new, origin issue, but yeah, I'm pretty he did. sure it was like Detective Thirty Seven. Uh, I think. I think it was. It could be. I, I know it was like. I think anyway, it was like thirty thirty seven. So I think it was before Robin. Could be wrong. Yeah, no, it, it was it was it was long before because I I don't think they added Robin until the latter part of the. No, he he thing. was thirty eight. It wouldn't have been long before, but I okay. do know that it it was uh, I think it was around there somewhere. Um, but yeah, fun times. I I know I have heard some people go off on uh, what's her name Kravitz as Catwoman. I didn't see it. I thought because she was of the patriarchy there. line. No, no, it's just that she doesn't. 
I don't know. Maybe she doesn't uh, fill, fill out the role for them, but I thought she I saw people complaining it. about the patriarchy line. Other than that, I didn't see anyone complaining about I, her. That's that's digging, in my opinion. It's one line, and it's so freaking quick. It, it's the only line. Um, I just don't see it. I that that's it didn't affect me whatsoever. It's it. There you go. It's out the window. Let's get back to the. Story. I mean, did it need to be there? No. Did it piss me off? No. We're moving on. <laughs> yeah. Overall, though, I I am. We talked about this beforehand before we did this because uh, this is my favorite superhero movie of the year. Dalton's favorite superhero movie of the year was Doctor Strange, but. We oh had God, put, I loved it. We had to put this in order, and when we were talking, we both agreed that objectively, this was the uh, better. Yeah, no, I, I admitted that objectively, Batman is probably a better put together movie, but there's just so much awesome in Multiverse of Madness for yeah. me to get off to. So, it's like, and that's mm. fine. That's fine. Uh, I've held. Str uh, I've look. I'm going to spoil my top ten. I've held firm that this is the best movie of the year so far. The only thing that might take it is when I rewatch Maverick. Um, otherwise, I mean, it is. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna spoil all of my other uh, versions of this list for the year. Um, no, no, don't. We've I got. Didn't... We're gonna be doing more of these. Yeah. Okay. But don't spoil them. We're we're gonna be doing dramas. We're gonna be doing comedies and so forth and so on. Um, and uh, then we'll finally do our big top ten. The reason. It's because I've got movies to see, and I don't like I, I don't like to do a top ten until the year's over. Mm. Give us time to watch everything that we want to watch uh, that that we might think make make your top ten, top twenty, top hundred, or whatever, and so forth and so on. Anyway, uh, there you go, guys. What do you think? How do you agree? How do you disagree? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, ring the notification bell. We're uh, trying to build this channel. We're going to be taking a little bit more serious here. Oh, by the way, we gained, uh, I, I did a review of Avatar and, and our subscriber count went from 113 to 114. Whoa. Okay, yeah. so now I'm going to have to be the contrarian and come in and shit all over it. All right. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, you could be the other, the other direction. All right, gang. Well, once again, thanks for hanging out with us. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching. Have a good time. Cheers, guys.